Oh, hey, YouTube, it's really good. My name is Vivica, Kelly, coach of the South Texas Save Lies, and this is going to be your week four battle for the WBE versus Duncan Can't Die, coach of the Free State Tour Cats. Now, this week, we're going to do the team builder before the battle just because we had uh, a pretty late schedule this week. Normally, you know, I think most of us try to skip, not, I, not, this isn't, I, when I say most of us, I'm not like me too. I mean, we just didn't battle until yesterday. So, or Friday rather, I'm recording this after the day that it's uploaded. Um, so we battled Friday and the upload is Saturday, so I shouldn't have time to do a team builder. Um, and I don't think it's any particular one person's fault or I'm not shoving blame anywhere. I'm just saying like, I, I didn't, I mean, it's my fault, right? Like I didn't have time. So there you go. Anyways, we're just going to do a quick team builder. I don't even have like fancy graphics. I normally have pretty fancy graphics down here, but I just, I don't today and it's fine. I think we'll live. Duncan's team is Blacephalon, Jirachi, Araquanid, Zygarde 10%, Hitmontop, Stoutland, Vickavolt, Zatu, Lorantis, and Mega Tyranitar. So a bunch of threats. Uh, and if you don't know my team by now, then I'm sorry, but it's also going to be changing after this week. Surprise. Spoilers. Uh, so uh, the Mons I have access to are Mew, Tapu Bulu, Halucha, Nidoking, Galvantula, Moltres, Noivern, Sandslash, Alolan Form, uh, Barbacle, and Sharpedo Mega. So, there you go. The matchup, um, uh, it, like, if just like looking at the, that cast of Mons, um, it feels like Halucha has a really good shot this week, uh, which is something I've not been able to do thus far. Th that being said, let's just look at what we're bringing. So, um, we're gonna go ahead, oh, I need to move my mouse over here. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring Mega Sharpedo, the Meg, uh, Crunch, Psychic Fangs, Liquidation, Liquidation, Aqua Jet. So we're max attack adamant with not much speed investment. I think this is just enough speed while adamant to outrun max speed Mega Tyranitar. The way his speed tiers work, he sort of like has um, Jirachi, Blacephalon, and Zygarde 10 as like his fast boys. Zygarde 10 topping out at 115 and Jirachi at 100 and then uh, Blaze at 100, 107. And then after that, it dips down to like Zatu, which almost, I mean, I wouldn't assume it to be speedy, so we probably would outspeed most Zatu sets even with this. Um, and then it goes like Stoutland, and then everything's like base 70s area, and then it dips down from there, essentially. So, something like that. The way his speed tiers worked, um, I didn't think I needed more speed. I, I only thought I needed enough speed to outspeed the Mega Tyranitar. Um, the attack investment is specifically for the Blacephalon. My Blacephalon matchup looked really, really rough um, going into this week. And just a max attack adamant aqua jet to an uninvested Blacephalon. So Blacephalon with like zero HP and four defense or something like that. Uh, four defense EVs would do 103% max. So even with a decent, not a decent, but like a small amount of investment, something like I think 36 HP investment um, for, you know, four defense or something like that, we're still okoing most of the time. Um, it, it's like at least a favorable role. So we're running this. It's just, it has a lot of hitting power. And uh, if I ever get my sticky webs up, you know, just a little spoiler alert for the Eric Gog here. Uh, if I ever get my sticky webs up, then we, I think we just outspeed his entire team unboosted. Like if the Zygarde doesn't have a Dragon Dancer, if nothing's Scarfed. So uh, this set looked really, really clutch. We don't need Ice Fang for the Zygarde because I think Crunch just Oko's anyway. Like Crunch just does a million damage to everything. Um, and then Psychic Fangs on the Hitmon top, like even after an Intimidate, will still two hit KO. Uh, so he can't switch in Hitmon top to try and get an Intimidate off unless he's specifically like some really weird max HP, max attack. Technician life orb set because then mock punch will okay. Uh, something like that. I don't know. We have enough HP investment to live a few hits. Like, specifically, I think like spec shadow ball to this Sharpedo um, never okos. So that's always a safe switch in. Mind blown, I think will always kill, but that's neither here nor there. Um, just like this spread does a lot of damage. Like, it hits a lot of things really, really, really hard. And I thought that the extra hitting power was worth more than the speed this week. Um, this is just like the most standard. Uh, suicide web galvantula set that I've ever 
ever played. I, I mean, that might not be true. I might have already brought a set similar to this, but I've never just brought the, like, the dead ass like, 252, 252, 4 <laughs> spread on it, at least. Um, I think the problem is that Galvangela's base speed is actually one point higher, right? If I, can I scroll down over here? No? Alright, well that's not how that works. Galvangela's base speed is 108 and Blacephalon's base speed is 107, so if I'm not max speed, I don't outspeed it. It's, it's just as simple as that, and then this gives me the most hitting power. This is like, if I somehow maintain my sash, I have a way to hit the Zygarde, but it also could have been Thunder Wave, it could have been Energy Ball, it could have been Bug Buzz. Um, without any type of boosting, like without Expert Belts or Life Orb, this like Bug Buzz never two hit KOs the Mega Tyranitar, uninvested. Like even if it's invested, it'll never two hit KO anyways. But um, it, like Bug Buzz never two hit KOs, so I just wanted some way to hit the Zygarde. Um, then we move into our like kind of weird Moltres set. Uh, this uh, before I move on any further, um, massive shout outs to um, Root eighty one hundred, Ranty HLD, and then um, a smaller shout out like not not to like this guy's helped me a lot too, but Ultra Player. Um, these three people, Ultra, what is it? He has like numbers after his name, Ultra Player. I don't know, 572. It's Ultra Player something. I, I feel really bad that I don't know off the top of my head. His name is Josh. He's really good. I'm going to link all three of them in the description down below. Um, Ultra Player gave me a few ideas for just like sets, like saying these two could just win the game on their own. Um, and then Randy and Root specifically came through with sets. Like Ultra Player gave me ideas for team comps, and Root and Randy came through with sets. So um, this is like the. Like Randy mentioned it and then Root really like latched onto it and pushed it hard. This was originally a Mew. Um, the Mew was Bulk Up, Drain Punch, Shadow Claw, or Knockoff, I think is what we settled on. Knockoff, and then Roost and or Zen Headbutt, something like that. It was a weird Mew set. Um, because like offensive Mew with Roost looked pretty good. And then we started looking at it and like it just gets nugged by everything. So Instead, we're going to bring the beautiful Phoenix boy here um, with U-turn to pivot in and out. Enough speed again to just outspeed max speed Tyranitar. Um, the way his team's speed tiers work and the way his threats work versus my team, there's just not much in between Tyranitar and, like, Jirachi that I need to, like, outpace ever. Like, I, if Zatu outspeeds this thing, that's fine, right? So, um, also the Stoutland. We should be able to swallow a hit, maybe. Maybe not like an Electrium Z if he's, I don't know, a weird sand rush. I whatever. Neither here nor there. Um, anyways, uh, the burn up lets us massively chunk the Jirachi. It lets us hit the, it lets us kill the Vicavolt, which is really important because Vicavolt actually looks pretty terrifying against my team. Um, and then this also lets us like 1v1 the spider in case, I don't know, we've already popped our Fly Z and we miss a hurricane or something. Like we can just get rid of our fire typing and then 1v1 spider always. Uh, so this set is, it's, it's heat, it's heat, uh, we're max HP here just to like soak up hits as much as possible, pivot around, get rid of our, getting rid of our fire typing doesn't save us from Tyranitar Stone Edges, like they still kill, um, and U-Turn was originally Will-O-Wisp, but after talking to Root about it, it was just like, what are you gonna do, just like hope Willow lands and then hope that Stone Edge doesn't crit, so made a lot of sense. Um, we're just like in front of Tyranitar, which you turn out. So this set, super, super, super flames, uh, super spicy. And you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm a big fan. I hope it performs well. Um, and then let's just move on to, we have our whole flying spam core uh, present this week. Um, this is the Raptor. The Halucha. Uh, so this set was like 100% Randy and Root. Root really hammered home the move set while Randy was just like talking about burn up tech. And then we all kind of like decided on flying EMZ together. Uh, Raptor here, this was like, I had a completely different set drummed up, uh, but we settled on this just because it looks like this has the potential to kill his entire team. Like he has one flying resist and, or he, sorry. He has one flying resist that can take fighting type attacks, and that's Jirachi. 
Like, no other Pokemon on his team wants to switch in to, like, a Sword Stance Acrobatics. Um, no Pokemon on his team, except for, like, Blacephalon wants to switch in on a Sword Stance High Jump Kick, really. Uh, so this really, like, this set just handles a lot of his threats, like with, uh, I think even without Sword Stance Up, just with like the Unburdened Boost, we should be able to Oko the Blacephalon. With the Sword Stance Up, HJK should be able to Oko a Chipped Jirachi. Um, acrobatics, I don't know if we need Sword Stance to kill the Araquanid, but I know even if we don't have one up, it's gonna like, we should always be able to snack on one hit uh, because of the defense boost we'll get from the seed and then Nugget twice. Uh, there's like a lot of things we can actually SD on. We should be able to SD on things like Kitmontop, um, Araquanid, Stoutlin, maybe even uh, Mega Tyranitar. I think uh, since we're max HP, we can always eat a stone edge like 100% of the time if we're max HP plus the defense boost. Um, so this is sort of like an all in Halucha set. Like we really can't bring it in until we're trying to punch a big hole or we're trying to win because we have zero speed investment. We are, we are max HP. <laughs> we are max HP adamant boys. So um, the way that works out is our speed. Uh, you can't see it, but it hits 138. And I think the fastest thing he has access to, obviously is like the fastest thing we count was a plus two Zygarde. So we'll never outspeed that, but we'll always outspeed a plus one Zygarde with a unburdened boost. So this set, it's all in, um, but it looks like it's it's a set that I enjoy. Uh, with the sword stance up, we can like get back a bunch of health with drain punch. We can 1v1 a lot of things in the late game. And honestly, I'm, you know, I'm I'm trusting my boys uh, because they they really they really pulled through here. And this was uh, this is how we're setting the grassy terrain. Uh, this was a big, a big root special, a big root special. Um, sub disable. If you've watched the way Bulu games have gone for me thus far, I keep getting nugged by random poison moves and just dying. So um, the plan here is to he. We have a lot of things that he has to switch out when we switch this thing in, um, like Zygarde, unless specifically it's like Steelium Z. Um, I think Hitmontop. I'm like 90% sure that Hitmontop uh, gets access to poison type coverage, but we should, if he's in like min speed, we should always outspeed. We have a little bit of speed investment just to like try and creep a Hitmontop or to try and creep like a min speed, like a very small amount of speed Tyranitar. So, um, sub disable just means that I can sub up on a switch and then when they come in with whatever their poison type coverage move is, we can disable it. Uh, the Horn Leech helps us get health back, and it also hits a lot of his team really hard. Like, it hits Raquinid really hard, hits the Tyranitar really hard. I think Horn Leech, two hit KOs, the Blacephalon, like, we're, we don't even have much attack investment. I think we have just enough attack investment to guarantee that we two hit KO Blacephalon. We should be able to, if not... We might have a shot to Oko the Zygarde after Chip, I think. Like, it just does a lot of damage for such a little amount of investment. Um, we're just like grassy terrain leftovers here, trying to stay as healthy as possible. And then Nature's Madness lets us really, really get uh, the switch in. So things like Jirachi, Blace um, not Blacephalon, uh, Jirachi, Vicavolt, Zatu, Lorantis, things that we just like can't hit hard. Um, we can Nature's Madness and like chunk them for half their health. So this is a root special. I think it's it's like actual flames. Um, and I'm hoping that we can play this core well this week. And then we have Nate. Uh, I've decided to name these after the Bubba Mewtwo fan Nate. I've been naming it Echo. It's just like kind of a lame name because like we get it. He uses echolocation. Uh, it's like a pretty standard scarf set. Uh, this is sped. Like the amount of speed investment just always outspeeds um, plus one Zygarde. So we outspeed his entire team. Um, Hurricane hits things really hard. He has, like I said, like he doesn't have many things that want to take flying type attacks so late game hurricane spam can be good draco meteor is the like safety button versus zygarde i thought about bringing dragon pulse just so we don't miss but if he has any type of investment like assuming he's quote unquote bulky uh zydog then 
we could end up in a really bad situation. So uh, we're bringing Draco Meteor. Dark Pulse is here because it hits the Blacephalon, the Rachi, and the Zatu. So it gives us like late game spam if he's kept a lot of his threats alive, and then you turn to pivot. So this is the team. And then uh, something I want to address, I don't know if I already said this, the battle is going to be post-com this week. Again, the way that timing worked, um, I didn't have a ton of time to like set up and do things live, but also I'd kind of like in my head told myself I was going to post-com this week anyways, just because the last two weeks I've played, I've been, I feel like not as analytical as I like to be in battles. Um, if you watch some of my run during like the NPA or I think even some of the PGBL battles that I did in past seasons, um, I feel like I play a lot more strategical post-com. I feel like that's true for almost everybody uh, because you just have time to like sit and think about things. So we are going to be post-coming this week. I hope that people don't hate that too much. Um, you know what? Just let me know. Let me know how you feel about it in the comment section down below. Let me know if you like the team builders attached to the video. Uh, I guess there will be a time code somewhere where you can skip the team builder and go to the battle. But since it's, you know, since post-com, it shouldn't be... Uh, 57 minutes long. I don't know. Whatever. All right. Love you. But now let's uh, let's jump into the battle and uh, get let's get going. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we're here with the battle, and I'm gonna press play, and we're just gonna you know we're gonna enjoy our time here together, reacting to a battle. This is now a reaction channel. There's always like a little blurble here. I normally skip to this part because it like, it like it's slow right there. Like there's a weird frame skip always at the beginning of battles, but. We're here. All right. So I decided to lead off the Moltres because it looked like a really solid lead on, you know, just in general for his team. And then he just immediately leads the Tyranitar. Now, remember, we are the burn up set, but I can't burn up and live a Stone Edge. So we just immediately have to click U-turn here. He's going to Mega. That's fine. Mega turn one. If he sets up rocks, it's kind of not good for me even a little bit uh just because rocks hurt a lot of my team like they hurt the Moltres, they hurt the northern they hurt the galv um also i'm immediately realizing that bringing focus sash gal focus sash galvantula to a matchup with tyranitar makes zero sense so we out immediately into our top of bulu it's kind of our designated tyranitar switch in tyranitar surprisingly i don't think gets poison coverage other than hidden power poison uh, it feels like everything in the world gets poison jab. So we get a switch in. We take a stone edge. It does a lot more damage than I'm anticipating. So it's either a high roll or this thing's really, 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 really attack invested. Um, either way, you see by the like grassy terrain recovery that we are faster. So we can just predict him to switch out here, set up a substitute, and then he goes out into one of the things that we just click nature's madness on, uh, which is sort of like the whole point of the set. The point really is that, look, We've set up a sub, we've taken a big hit, but after lefties and then that grassy terrain, we're we're chilling. We're almost back up to 50% health, and we can just set up a, you know, not set up, but use nature's mana. So we use it here. We see we outspeed, which is problematic because there's only two reasons we would outspeed. One, if he's like a super neg speed nature, which would mean trick room, and two is trick room because it has a negative priority, which is, you know, just fantastic. So now... Uh, all of the things I've tried to speed creep don't matter. <laughs> Nothing makes sense anymore. We're under Trick Room. Um, I am still behind a sub, which is, I guess, like, one of the redeeming factors here. I have to just go for Nature's Madness, um, because he's above 50%, which means that Nature's Madness should do something like 27-ish percent. Uh, anyways, he switches out either way. Rather than going for, like, a fast U-turn or anything, he just switches out. Uh, so we get to go for Nature's Madness again. He switches into this thing. Really smart move, uh, just because Bug Buzz goes through subs. So if he's a boosting item, something like Expert Belts, Life Orb Specs, uh, Bug Buzz just kills me right here and now. Because I have like a decent amount of defense investment, I don't have much spidef at all. So we immediately just have to predict the Bug Buzz. Like He has to go for it. He can't just go for Thunderbolt in front of me and go right out into Moltres. Moltres here. Kind of snacks on a bug buzz. Uh, we have enough HP that it just doesn't matter. We cannot uh, snack on a thunderbolt. Um, the sandstorm goes away. 
Nice. No one's getting grassy terrain recovery anymore because it disappears, but also neither of us are touching the field. It's kind of weird to me that this bug has levitate, but I, I get it. It's, it's clearly in the air, but still. Um, we predict a Thunderbolt, and we just double right out into Bulu here. I think this is the play that had to be made. Uh, just because I nothing on my team wants to snack on a Thunderbolt. Uh, my team's really weak to it, actually. Um, Galv took like 70% from... I mean, I don't think... I think uh, the calcs from this are that he's not a sort of like a boosting item. At least the item is not like... It's not life orb or specs. Uh, because the bug buzz would have done a lot more to the Moltres. We have to pull a triple switch here. Just the patented casual triple switch uh, to try and snack on another bug buzz. It works. This is the last turn of Trick Room, so now we are in a really favorable situation where our Noivern is out versus this thing. We're faster again. Uh, he basically has to switch out because he can never eat a Hurricane. So we can just go for the clean U-turn here. Getting a lip, just a little bit more chip on this thing. Uh, we got a, a decent chunk off of the off of it um, the first turn with the Moltres U-turn, but it's because it was a crit. Like I think it did something at like 25%, and I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's a lot of damage, and then it was a crit. So now he's back, you know, about 25%, but about to get some grassy train recovery. We have to go out immediately on the top of Bulu. So so far this game, if you're keeping up with it. Uh, I think this was like a four switch combo if you count U-turn as like a switch because we switched from Bulu to uh, Fire Burb, from Fire Burb to Bulu, from Bulu to Noivern, and then you turned into the Bulu again. Um, this turn we are just going to go for the Horn Leech because uh, if he stays in we get to kill. If not, um, it always two hits the Jirachi from the range if that's his like chosen switch in again. He switches into this thing. Um, I do a quick move search. And this thing also gets Trick Room. Um, so we take Rocky Helmet damage. Not fantastic. It, you know, like, we needed the recovery chip from the Horn Leech here. Didn't get it. It's okay, though, because we still have our Grassy Terrain and Lefties to, to keep us healthy. I have to switch here. I don't have, like, Nature's Power or Madness or whatever. Ma madness. Nature's Madness against this thing doesn't make any sense. Um, I got into Fire Burb here. It's just, like, my most diverse... I, I guess thing to take hits and also like roost off the damage. I kind of stuttered there, but I promise I, I have I have a clear thought in my head. Um, so he sets up Trick Room. I can just probably predict him to go for a fast U-turn here, which means I can stay in and go for a slow U-turn, uh, which is what ends up happening. So he goes for U-turn and da -da -da -da, we're Flame Body uh, and you know we proc. Because, of course, we do. We're just actually a legend. <laughs> uh, I don't think it matters. This thing is attack stat is already garbage. I'm sure that it had special attacking moves anyways. Um, so, he brings in this big boy. Or big boy? Is that what it is? We get more chip off on it with U-turn. Uh, which now I'm like almost 100% positive that it is in range of Horn Leech from Bulu. Because um, this Horn Leech never Okos, but it's pretty clean to kill once he's like sub 75% or so uh, which is about where he's at he's probably right there it's probably like 65 ish so um, still I think maybe a small roll but not a big one we get to go up to above half health which is really important because we should always be able to snack on an ice punch or a stone edge he goes for the ice punch um, if he had gotten I think a really really max roll this would have killed here so a little bit of a risky play uh, but it was one where if it was a roll, I'm pretty sure it was in my favor. I don't know his exact spread um, I so I don't know how much attack investment he had but just based off of like standard rolls it looked favorable So we actually get to stay in kill this thing Great we get to go back up to half health again. We're just keeping our, our bull man healthy and also The the sandstorm is gone, which means that now the focus sash on Calvantula is surprisingly relevant. Um, okay, so he goes out into this Bubba. He's still faster, so I'll, I have to predict a poison jab here and just go out into the Moltres. Switching in Moltres to an Araquanid. Not really where I want to be in life, but alas, it's where we are. We somehow managed to skillfully dodge the poison, and then we just have to pull another double. Is he still faster than us? Um, and we go out into the, the Noivern here. So I'm just really using these flying types as pivots. If that's, that's not a... Not apparent by now. Um, they haven't done much other than staying in pivot. Uh, this turn, he went for uh, the the bug move. I can predict him to switch here um, and go for the U-turn. He doesn't switch uh, because we're faster now. So I was like, surely he doesn't want to stay in and munch on a hurricane. Um, 
he ends up super teching the ice beam, which I think from the range my Northern was at would have killed. Like, he doesn't need much special attack investment for that to kill. Um, we get the smallest amount of chip off, and then ooh, ooh, we're in with this Moltres, and it has the fly in EMZ, so I'm going to go for it because he's lost his Tyranitar. The Jirachi dies, presumably. Um, if it doesn't die to this, it dies to the burn up. So... Stay in, go for Fly Z. He doesn't have anything left on his team that just like wants to switch in on this. And we're just gonna see if this thing is like max spadef AV, then it snacks. Uh, if it is AV with a little bit of spadef, it doesn't snack. And it turns out, uh, spoiler alerts, I do know this set uh, because Duncan showed it to me. Um, it was like two, max HP with a little bit of spadef. And so the hurricane kill might have been a roll, but he already had a little bit of chip. So we're kind of unclear there. He switches into his Blacephalon, he goes for Shadow Ball. In my mind, I have to just like let this thing go. Uh, if he goes for something that doesn't kill me, then I get to roost up here and that's great. Um, but I can always just like sack Moltres, switch into Mega Sharpedo, um, Mega Evolve and Aqua Jet on this thing. Because the Aqua Jet, if he's uninvested, kills, and if not, that's fine. I can win this in game with Galvantula or going Bulu Halucha. Because the Galvantula Sash is still intact. And then um, it hits everything left for a ton of damage with just Thunders. Um, and then the Halucha also can do pretty much the same thing since everything is chipped down. Um, so. He switches into his bird here. I reveal the Aqua Jet. We take Rocky Helmet damage. We go for a crunch. Um, I could have not outsped this thing, depending on its investment, but seeing as he was like Trick Room sets, I'm pretty confident. Uh, we get the crunch off. It dies. And then I'm looking at his team, and he has Jirachi, Blacephalon, and a chunked Vicavolt left. So everything else just dies to this if Aqua Jet kills. If this thing has no investment, it kills, and it does. So now he has a Jirachi that presumably is not faster than my Shark because even though I have such a small amount of speed investment, he has a Trick Room set. Um, and this thing just never outspeeds anyways. So the, we're gonna crunch here. And since he went under this thing before the Jirachi, I can pretty much assume that he knows uh, that it was like kind of a, almost like a concession, right? Like he knows that Shark is just going to claim the last four souls here. So Shark ends up ending this game uh, with four kills. This is actually incredible. I didn't think Shark was going to do anything without webs up. Uh, I didn't. I thought that it would be really good at just offensively checking the Blacephalon. And it turns out it did a lot more than that. And that is the game. Uh, we actually won with a 5-0, which is mind-boggling if you just compare how... I, I don't know, like how good Duncan's team is versus how uh, kind of awkward my team is. But... I feel like we played our switch as well. Um, it was analytical. I thought things through. I feel like in a better headspace, and I might, I might do some more post comms uh, just to get, just to get myself into the mindset of playing analytical. It's just really hard, I think, to be analytical while also being entertaining and talking. And uh, I know a lot of people can do it. Like a lot of people are really good at it. Like Dan's really good at it. Wolf's really good at it. Um, some of these people are really good at it, and maybe maybe I'm just not. Maybe I get too distracted. I don't know. Um, let me know how you feel about the post-com battles. Uh, they are definitely shorter, so that's, like, kind of a bonus. But, you know, uh, that's, that's going to be all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this battle, please go ahead and leave a like. We are now 2-2 with a differential of, I think, plus 6, which is cool because... Um, both my wins were 5 O's, so my differential is just, like, naturally not bad. Um, so, thank you. means the absolute most. Uh, if you enjoyed this, leave a like. Comment down below. Let me know how you feel about the post-coms, how you feel about the team builders being in the same video type of thing. And then, uh, you know, we'll just, we'll see where we go with life. You can follow me on Twitter to keep up with what I'm doing. I've been streaming a lot of Teamfight Tactics on Twitch, so if you're into that game... Uh, you might should follow me there. I have a new video background I'm working on. If you haven't watched my like royalty free Pokemon graphics video yet, it's like motion graphics you can use in videos. You can go watch that and get yourself some free assets. I have another one I'm working on that I should upload sometime this upcoming week. Um, yeah. Okay. Love you. Thank you so much for your time. It means the absolute most. Subscribe, like, comment. Uh, you can make fun of me in the comment section down below. I like it when people do that. It means a lot to me. Um, but yeah. I think I am kind of done here and I got to leave. 